Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's card features some new release Lawn Fawn products as well as the Magic Picture Changer die set. I'm starting by inking some clouds on this. You know, I can never remember the full name for these dies that cut out these stitched rectangles. They're like stitched rectangles stackables, I think. But for some reason, every time I think about it, just on the spot, my brain freezes and I can't think of what the name is. <laughs> anyway, I am inking from Scouter Straw to Worn Lipstick, and then finally I will use Wilted Violet. My goal here is just to make a really pretty sky that in real life, if you've seen it, you would maybe feel compelled to paint it. Off camera, I have stamped and cut some images from the Elephant Parade stamp set. I say some. It was one. It was one single elephant. <laughs> I struggled a little bit with my gray colors because I have some Copic markers that desperately needed a refill. Moving on, the next stamp set I had used images from was this Fly High stamp set. This is also from the new release. As I'm coloring the hot air balloons, I'm mostly just trying to stick to the limited color palette I've already given myself, which was yellow, pink, and purple. But to that, I am going to add a little bit of green and also, of course, brown for the basket.
So I decided that I should probably have some grass and I am going to use cracked pistachio for my grass, which is not a color I would normally use for the grass, although I do really like this color. It's a bit pastel or, you know, at least very soft anyway. So I use this because it kind of went with the color that I used for the hot air balloon. And I'm also going to cut that out with my simple grassy hillside border dies. And then this step will come as a surprise to no one. I am going to take my Distress ink in the same color and I am going to add some splatter because I just feel like the grass is too flat otherwise. Next, pulling out my Magic Picture Changer die set. I am going to use this for, I don't know, is it the second time? I did this before I did the Hogwarts cards. And I don't know, I always feel like this is more complicated than it really is. So here I'm just tracing out the section that you can actually stamp in where you'll see the images. And I decided that I needed to do the first one with splatter. So I have this splatter background stencil from Lawn Fawn and I'm going to use the exact same colors I used as the sky and I am going to kind of ink it up in the same order on these splatters. The idea was that when you paint things it tends to look like a mess before it looks like it's anything good. So this is the first stages of a painting. Doing the same thing on the smaller panel and this time I decided I was going to stamp my hot air balloon in Lawn Fawn Jellyfish ink. Now the reason I chose this is because I wanted it to look a little bit different than what the rest of the card looked like. That way it actually looked like a painting and not just a picture of the exact same thing. So I've also created a little mask so that I can blend the same colors in. I'm not going to worry about the clouds here because it's supposed to be a painting and not a picture. I am using the exact same markers as well to color in my hot air balloon. I did switch it up a little bit and this was accidental. So when I get to the yellow parts of the hot air balloon, that's not where I meant to put it, but I wasn't paying enough attention. So my hot air balloon looks a little bit different in the painting than it does on the rest of the card. Now cutting these two pieces out is pretty simple. You just line it up roughly with the pencil marks you made before. And if you don't like exactly where something is placed, as long as you still have paper to slide the die around on. Ugh, I can't talk. I never can. <laughs> um, as long as there's still paper to cut, then you're fine to scoot it over just a little bit if you need to. Now, assembling the Magic Picture Changer isn't too difficult. I always make things look harder than they actually are. <laughs> um, if you need a detailed tutorial on that, Lawn Fawn always does one for their interactive dies. I mean, they do one for pretty much everything, I think, but their interactive dies, they're pretty thorough on that. So I do find that if you throw some anti-static powder onto the two different pieces. They slide together better. I'm not really sure why that is, 
So I have done that here, as you can see, just to get it to slide together without catching. And of course, the more you mess with it, I think the easier it gets to move back and forth. Now I'm going to take the Magic Picture Changer add-on and I'm going to cut both of these pieces. And for the front panel, I did have to ink it up with the pink and yellow clouds based on where it was going to sit. Ideally, you would have done this when you ink blended the first panel. I didn't because I haven't really used this die set too much and I didn't even think about it while I was blending the background. I just ink blended the little pull tab add-on piece with worn lipstick. Now here's another thing that I do that I wouldn't have done had I really thought about it. And that is I had already adhered the grass border down. Now I adhered the magic picture changer. I have this little outside edge that comes in the regular magic picture changer die set and I cut some wood grain cardstock to make sort of like a picture frame and now I had to do a whole nother grass piece in order to cover that up because it looked kind of weird for that whole sky piece to be in front of the grass. So now just adhering my little elephant and my hot air balloons making sure that nothing is touching the magic picture changer at least not glued to it anyway and then for my balloon the small one can't say the other one, just the small one. I did have to pop the top up with foam tape so that it was even with the little magic picture changer bit. Now for a little bit of extra detail, I have the art supplies die set from Lawn Fawn because a painter needs their paints and paintbrushes. And the final detail that I thought would be kind of cute is to add a little paint splatter on top of the elephant's head. 
That's all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back with another video soon. Bye!